saucers, demonstrating incredible performance. Reported by credible witnesses. I got trapped here about 1.30 Are they alien vehicles or optical illusions? Or could there be a more sinister explanation? There's a new trail of evidence that leads back to secret Nazi technology. And a post-war conspiracy to keep UFOs a mystery to this day. <laughs> UFO Reporting Center reports 400 new UFO witness sightings every month. Disc-shaped objects, triangular craft, and flying lights are the most common objects reported. Many believe UFOs come from outer space. But there's another theory. That what we now call UFOs got their start in World War II, inside Hitler's Germany. A new investigation reveals that Nazi engineers were working on disc-shaped craft, vertical takeoff, and advanced propulsion systems. After the war, the U.S. military secretly took the designs back to the States, along with thousands of German scientists and engineers. Two years later, in 1947, the first wave of UFO sightings occurs across the United States and then around the world. UFOs be secret U.S. aircraft developed from captured German designs? To find an answer, we have to look at some of the most compelling UFO sightings. Those witnessed by professional pilots trained in aerial observation. The first major pilot reports date back to the final months of World War II. Declassified British and American documents revealed that in the skies over Germany, Allied pilots witnessed unusual flying objects. The crews were seeing strange objects that they couldn't identify. As they engaged them or tried to engage them, they weren't acting normal like conventional aircraft. The men nicknamed the objects Foo Fighters after a popular comic book character. But there was nothing funny about these encounters. Researcher Keith Chester has interviewed 12 Foo Fighter witnesses and analyzed dozens of Allied pilot reports. Some of the pilots actually thought that they were traveling at speeds in excess of thousands of miles per hour, the way they shot straight up in the air or away from them. Most of the veterans that I've talked with have since passed away, except for one. And his name is Major Harold Augsburger. He was commanding officer of the 415th. I saw a light off the right wing. We couldn't tell how close it was, but it was falling along. Whatever we turned, it turned. My radar operator looked the words. He said, looks like a light to me, but I don't have an airplane on my radar system. So we made a turn to go over to see what it was and when we got closer to it all of a sudden this exploded up just like a rocket at first the crews keep quiet about the sightings it was a real secret thing Nobody talks about it at all. The Foo Fighter reports make their way up the U.S. Army chain of command. Many assume they are German secret weapons. Some scientists from Washington, D.C. showed up in France to the unit to investigate what this was. And they had no answers, and they told the men just to keep it quiet. Reports soon leak out, and major newspapers print stories about the mysterious objects. Fireballs are chasing American bombers. The Allies have good reason to fear any new German weapons. Advanced V-1 and V-2 rockets are already raining down on England. 
Nazi jet fighters are shooting down Allied bombers. And Hitler speaks about new wonder weapons that he is developing to win the war for Germany. If the Foo Fighters chasing Allied airplanes are Nazi secret weapons, they would be coming from secret German facilities, 20,000 feet below, in a series of top secret Nazi bunkers. Since the summer of 1944, the German war machine had been moving underground to escape heavy Allied bombing. Across Poland, Austria, and Czechoslovakia, vast complexes were dug out by slave labor. These facilities housed munitions factories and jet engine plants. They also hid the work of Hitler's scientists, men ordered by Hitler to build him a war-winning weapon. Hans von Oheim's revolutionary jet engines propelled fighters through the skies. The Horton brothers built space-age flying wings. Alexander Lippisch worked on vertical takeoff craft. At Penamunda, legendary rocket engineer Werner von Braun built the first ballistic missiles. And most radical of all, men like Victor Schauberger explored new sources of propulsion. It boggles the mind to try to grasp what these guys were thinking because it is so totally alien and that allowed them to go into areas that are completely beyond the western paradigm beyond what western science says this is this is what science is and the nazis said yeah this is what science is this huge operation was under the command of ss general dr hans kammler an engineer by trade Kammler redesigned the ovens at Auschwitz for greater efficiency. In 1943, he led the destruction of the Warsaw Ghetto. And then in 1944, he took command of the entire Nazi secret weapons program. Working out of the Skoda factory in Pilsen, Czechoslovakia, Kammler and a hand-picked think tank brainstormed and approved advanced weapons designs. Some were so radical, only a handful of people knew the full details. The Germans worked on various, uh, I would say, unconventional aerial systems or weapons to build some objects that were more or less circular. Vertical takeoff and landing crafts, for example. Vertical takeoff was a top priority for Kammler's team. Germany's runways were being bombed out of existence. They needed a warbird that wasn't reliant on 800 feet of tarmac. One project had that potential. Die Glocke. The Bell. Igor Witkowski is a Polish aerospace historian. He has researched the Bell for over 20 years. His investigations have concluded that the device was tested in an underground facility called the Wenceslas Mine. The external appearance of the bell was such that it was a ceramic cover. Uh